Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest timepiece to come from the micro brand MMI watches. And that is this turret divers GMT that happens to um, operate an automatic Seiko NH34 movement. Now I'll quickly mention that this watch is currently in their promotional phase of pricing. So you can actually pick up this watch for 399 USD and that price is good until about mid May of this year. And now you can also save yourself a little bit money if you don't want to go with the H-Link bracelet and get like a leather strap option. Personally, I would definitely get it on the bracelet though. And now I will say I've also reviewed a number of the turret models on my channel in the past. This happens to be my favorite one so far. But uh, what gives it that name is if you uh, zoom in on the dial and you take a little bit of a look closer to the center, there's individual date cutouts for each day of the month. And what denotates the actual day is this uh, orange index that just moves around as you skip from one day to the next. But first, uh, let me go over the overall dimensions for this watch and then I'll get into some more of the actual features. So you do have a 40 millimeter case diameter here. If I flip the watch to the side, uh, lug to lug distance between my thumbs comes in right around uh, 46.9 millimeters. And then in case thickness, I measure it at only 13.5 millimeters. From the bottom of a screw down case back, and then to the top of a slightly chamfered and flat sapphire crystal, which does have some anti-reflective treatment on it, but there is still some uh, reflections on my studio lights that are here. I'll also mention that between the lugs is an even 22 millimeters where the OEM bracelet does sit. Uh, the bracelet does taper a little to about 20 millimeters before you hit the uh, MMI signed clasp. I'll mention that uh, you have screwed links to size out individual links of the bracelet, and then about five micro adjustment anchoring points on the clasp. So getting a good fit should be easy to do. Uh, there's a twin trigger release to open up the swing arm for this particular bracelet. And then I'll quickly mention that if you look at the first end links for the bracelet, they have quick release tabs here. So if you wanna swap out this for a strap, it should be quick and easy to do. And here's a quick in-studio wrist shot, just so you can see how this watch would wear on a seven and a half inch wrist. That's 19 centimeters in circumference if you use the metric system. Uh, it does have some wrist presence and heft to it. I actually weighed the watch head with the supplied bracelet at being 176 grams sized up for my wrist size. But of course you can lighten the load if you wanna throw on a strap. And I can see this being like a fun summer watch with the really cool ice blue color pattern to it. Now I should quickly mention too that there are different colorways available for this particular GMT diver. There's like a black option and a yellow one. This is my personal favorite with the ice blue dial. Um, strikingly, I didn't think that the ice blue dial was fully loomed, but it appears to be the case that there's a BGW9 that's fully loomed for the dial itself. And then for the applied elements and the hands and even the ceramic bezel, you're getting um, C3 grade X1 Swiss Superluminova on that as well. So I'll throw up a low light shot now just to show you how this watch lights up in the dark. I was quite surprised and um, it was actually kind of cool. Now the overall longevity of a loom uh, on the dial itself isn't the best, but uh, it's easy to read at night if you're just looking at the uh, hour hands, the GMT hand or the uh, individual hour markers. Now, if we move in on the dial and take a look at the individual elements, um, I like the visual interest that it has. The hour markers are applied elongated baton style that have um, twin markers at the uh, 12 and six o'clock position. They're nicely framed. I think they're rhodium plated and highly polished. Um, and then they are loom filled in the centers. There's a fair bit of text going on. I mean, with all the numbers for the, uh, the date wheel, you also, ha also have a lot of numbers at the periphery of a dial to tell your second time zone. You can see that there's odd Arabic numbers from one to 23 um, that will help you align that additional orange tipped GMT hand um, to give you reading of a second time zone. 
It all kind of works um, from a distance, but I do find it hard to read the date in particular, as well as the Arabic numerals for the GMT second time zone. If we move away from the dial and take a look at the uh, bezel, it is a dive style 120 click unidirectional coin edge bezel. Um, the grip on it is a bit shallow and the action is very tight actually, but each click is very distinct. And I will say you get pretty good alignment. Um, because it is a ceramic bezel insert, sometimes you might actually see some smudges um, if you operate this uh, bezel with your bare hands, but it would be very difficult to actually operate the bezel with gloves in my humble opinion. In terms of case finishes, they did a pretty nice job. You can see it's kind of got some angular lugs with a nice polished transitional bevel line as you move to the side of a case, which has some nice vertical brushwork. The crown is a seven millimeter signed and screwed down crown, helping rain to retain that 300 meters of water resistance. It's also got a loomed um, MMI symbol on the crown, which is kind of a cool feature. And then in terms of operating that Seiko NH34 automatic movement, uh, first you have to unscrew the crown. You can manually wind this movement in the neutral position. If you pop the crown into the first position, um, winding it one way, you can see you advance um, the actual date disc that's there. And then if you operate it the other way, you can cycle that to 24 hour GMT hand as well. And then if you do pull out the crown to extremity, you can hack the, um, the seconds hand by stopping the balance. And then you can set the whole thing to any reference time that you would like. So overall, as a diver's GMT package, uh, I'm very impressed with the color option that MMI went with. The build quality of the case and bracelet is very strong indeed. If I did have a small couple of nitpicks, um, one, I would say that it's not the most legible um, watch when it comes to trying to read the date or the second time zone. And also when it comes to um, the bezel action and just trying to operate it, just because it's really hard to grip um, and it's a fairly thin bezel insert itself, um, I, d I found it difficult to turn. So maybe they could enhance that for future iterations of the turret GMT. But outside of that, guys, I think this is a fun watch to get for the summer. Uh, I do think it's good value for money. Um, and I do want to thank MMI for lending it in for this review. I will be sending it back to them after this video concludes. And as always, I'd love to hear your personal thoughts on this timepiece in the comments section of this video. And if you do enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It does help out a lot. So that's going to do it for this review. And as always, I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.